Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? You know, in the sport of boxing, we should all have the right to voice our opinion on what we think about the sport of boxing, what we think about particular fighters. There is nothing wrong with that. Everyone should be able to voice their opinion. Regardless if you have a very intellectual opinion and you are a very knowledgeable boxing aficionado when it comes to knowing the sport of boxing, or even if you're just a fucking dumbass that's begging for the knowledge and you want to voice your opinion, everyone should be entitled to have their own opinion and be able to voice it, right? But when you are on one of boxing's biggest stages to talk about boxing and you clearly know nothing about the sport, like Skip Bayless, the question is, should someone like Skip Bayless be allowed to represent a sport that he knows nothing about. And to that, I say absolutely not. This man, Skip Bayless, he couldn't spell the word boxing if it was already written on a piece of paper and all he had to do is trace the motherfucking letters. All right? And he makes it very clear that he knows nothing about the sport of boxing. He makes it very clear. All Skip is is a fucking cheerleader in a business suit. Everything that Skip Bayless says is fueled by hate, disdain, dislike, or whatever you want to call it. But it's fueled by something that we would call bias favoritism. Now, to really understand where I'm going, let me make my own personal example. Let's just say, for example, Manny Pacquiao, he's still on top. He ain't got knocked out. He's still doing his thing. He's still considered pound for pound number one, number two, best fighter in the world. And I'm doing my videos like I always do. And all of a sudden, he's about to fight Marquez or Brandon Rios or Margarito, whoever the fighter is, right? And I say in my video, I say in my breakdown video, I say, you know what, guys? Quietly, I am rooting against Manny Pacquiao. In other words, I hope this motherfucker loses, right? And so I say this in my breakdown. Now, the aftermath, after Manny Pacquiao wins the fight, he wins impressive, I make a post-fight video. Now, keep in mind, you guys already know that I made a breakdown video about Manny Pacquiao, and I told you in that video that I hope that he loses. So now, Manny Pacquiao, he wins, I have to make a post-fight video. Now, in my post-fight video, I go on a tirade, you know, basically telling you guys how, you know, Manny Pacquiao, he didn't do anything special. He beat the shit out of Brandon Rios. Brandon Rios was flat-footed. You know, I felt sorry for Brandon Rios. And furthermore, how come Manny Pacquiao couldn't knock him out? This is the problem. You know, how come Manny Pacquiao, he don't really knock out anyone at the welterweight division, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's why he will never be one of the greats, because he ain't knocking out none of these welterweight fighters, right? Now, if you put together everything that I said, from the breakdown video to the post fight video, how would that make me look? You guys wouldn't take serious what I said, right? Because you guys will say, this guy clearly is biased. This guy clearly said that he was rooting against Manny Pacquiao, so of course he would say nothing but negative things because he is a fucking cheerleader and the team that he was cheering for, they lost. So wouldn't it make complete sense why a casual fan like Skip Bayless will go on a tirade completely trying to discredit Floyd Mayweather? Of course it would. See, the example that I just made, this is exactly what Skip Bayless said out of his own fucking mouth. When Skip Bayless, along with Stephen A. Smith, was given his final thoughts before the big Mayweather-Canelo fight, that's what he said. He said, and I quote, I will be quietly rooting against Floyd Mayweather, but I would never bet against Floyd Mayweather. You know, that, that statement right there, it tells you a lot about what haters in general think about Floyd Mayweather. They want him to lose, but they know deep down that he's too fucking good. And there's the and most likely they're going to get their feelings hurt. They're going to get their heart broken again and again because Floyd Mayweather is going to most likely keep winning. Right. I remember some guy, he told me 
you know, at the boxing gym a long time ago. He was trying to bet against Floyd, or not bet against Floyd, but he was telling me, Floyd going to get his ass whooped, et cetera, et cetera. I said, put some money on it. And then when I said put some money on, he started talking that, oh, you know, I'm not a betting guy and this and that. Oh, because sometimes you bet and people don't want to put the money, you know, put the money up and all this kind of shit. I said, I'll put the money up. I got the money right here. So-and-so can hold our money. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want to bet. I don't want to bet. I, I don't do that kind of shit. I don't bet on. You, you feel me? So this is basically what Skip Bayless was saying. The man acknowledged that he is a hater, right? How can you take him? So how can we consider this guy's quote-unquote professional assessment to be considered non-biased when he tells you that I am quietly rooting against Floyd Mayweather? We can't take it serious, and we can't look at it as a non-biased opinion. We have to look at his assessment the same way we look at the dumbasses on YouTube that say shit that people don't even really pay attention to. Because that's the type of opinion that Skip Bayless is, is spewing out. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Stephen A. Smith is an expert or a boxing aficionado himself because he's not. The only difference is Stephen A. Smith, he can recognize skill and greatness when he sees it. And you know, Skip Bayless, he recognizes it, but he tries, he refuses to acknowledge it. So he gets blinded by hate, okay? I mean, even when you listen, you, you just listen to everything he says that fucking makes no sense at all. Skip Bayless, he goes on this, this silly-ass tirade talking about, oh, how come he can't knock out anybody? He's not knocking out anyone, et cetera, et cetera, right? Oh, yeah, you fucking putting pressure on the guy who woke up at 146 pounds the day of the fight, came in at 150, and you putting pressure on him to knock out the guy at the higher division at this 15 pounds bigger than him. Does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, that's no different than if, let's just say hypothetically, Magic Johnson, he won six NBA Finals back-to-back -back in a row. MVP every single year, right? And then you get Skip Bayless get on the motherfucking microphone talking about, yeah, but how come I don't see him doing any 360-degree dunks? I ain't never seen him dunk from the free throw line. He can't dunk, can he? And because of that, you can never compare him to Dr. J or Michael Jordan or et cetera, et cetera. That's how fucking stupid the shit sounds. Or it's like saying, you know, if uh, there's a Super Bowl team, they keep winning the Super Bowl every fucking year. And you say, well, how come they can never blow out any of the teams? How come they always barely win by three points in overtime by seven points? How come they can't do that, huh? Answer that. That's why they'll never be one of the greats. Let me tell you something one more time. And this is just to educate the dumbasses. Because the educated fans, they already know this. So I'm not telling them this. A knockout versus a unanimous decision is equivalent to a slam dunk versus a jump shot. They're both worth two points. Okay? I mean, like I said, if Larry Bird were to fucking win, you know, the NBA Finals every fucking season. I can guarantee you no one would be complaining that fucking Larry Bird, he can't slam dunk. They would, you know, because when Magic Johnson was, was you know, going up against Larry Bird and they had that big rivalry, there, half of the people were saying Larry Bird was the greatest. He was this, he was that. They didn't care that he couldn't dunk. They just wanted to see him win. They wanted to see all them assists. All the, 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 you know, the layups and et cetera, et cetera, the three-point shots. They didn't care that he couldn't dunk. All right? I mean, knocking someone out is just style points. Okay? It looks more impressive. It does look more flashy. But realistically, if you're comparing Floyd Mayweather to, Floyd Mayweather to the greats, Sugar Ray Leonard, he didn't knock out all of the greats that he fought. Okay? He couldn't knock out a bigger, stronger Hagler. He didn't he didn't knock out Duran. Duran quit. Alright? I mean, if you if you're gonna criticize one fighter for doing that, then you gotta go down the list. You gotta look at all of the fighters. George Foreman, he knocked Frazier out very easy. He lifted his fucking feet off the ground with a knockout. Knocked him down like four or five times. Muhammad Ali, 
He fought Joe Frazier three times, could never even knock him down. So if you're going to play it, you can't have it both ways. And that's why that's why it's so hard for the haters to try to prove their point. Because every time when a hater talks, he always contradicts himself and sticks his foot in his motherfucking mouth. He always leaves openings to be contradicted. And that's exactly what this silly motherfucker that you're looking at on this screen right now is doing. Contradicting himself because he filled with fucking hate. I mean, look at this picture. Look at the hate in this man's eyes. You going to honestly sit here and tell me this man doesn't speak with hate? I mean, his fucking face will tell you that alone. Skip Bayless is nothing but the ESPN's version of Rush Limbaugh. And for those of you guys that don't know Rush Limbaugh's history, he used to be a sport analyst for football until he got fired for saying racist shit about black people. He ain't, you know, he was always racist, but he just end up revealing too much of his racism. See, that's the whole thing. See, racist people, they learn from Rush Limbaugh. We can be racist, but we got to remember not to cross that fucking borderline, right? And this is what people like Jim Lampley do. This is what people like Skip Bayless do. They make sure they don't cross that fucking borderline. They'll talk about all the black athletes, but they know not to go too far. You know, they know not to go rush Limbaugh in front of the goddamn camera. Okay? That's exactly what Skip Bayless is. He ain't nothing different. He ain't nothing different. And, you know, it's funny how the, the haters who have no knowledge of the sport... Or some of them do have knowledge, but they just can't stand Floyd Mayweather. It's funny how they follow this motherfucker to the grave from, you know, from what he just said. You know, I'm getting the messages from the little sprinkle of the fucking dumbasses. They come on my, you know, they come on my video and they say word for word the exact same hate and shit that they just heard Skip Bayless say. And, I, and I'm going to make it just real clear. Like I said, man, I'm really, really trying my best. I can't guarantee it, but I'm really trying my best to refrain from responding to the dumbass fans. You know, because it's a waste of fucking time. The you know, at, you know, at the end of the day, no one is going to take what they say serious. Other than other fucking dumbasses on YouTube. Those are the only ones that are going to come together and congregate and say stupid shit. I mean, there is a reason why you have professional, legendary fighters like Bernard Hopkins, who is calling Floyd Mayweather top three greatest of all time, even ranking Floyd Mayweather above himself, right? And then you got, not, like I said, Nacho Beristein. He's calling Floyd Mayweather the Michael Jordan of the sport, right? And, and, Nacho, and when you call somebody Michael Jordan, you're already letting people know how great you think this person is. That's why you have Oscar De La Hoya calling this man arguably the greatest fighter of all time. And what's so funny about Oscar De La Hoya is Oscar is Floyd Mayweather's rival. Now you tell me, how many times in the history of boxing have you ever seen a rival say that the guy they rivaled against is arguably the greatest fighter of all time? Right? You will never hear... Roberto Duran called Sugar Ray Leonard one of the greatest of all time. You will never hear Frazier call Ali that. You will never hear Sonny Liston call Ali that. Okay? Not even George Foreman. But you heard Oscar De La Hoya call a man that has talked so much shit about him. You heard Oscar De La Hoya call that same man arguably the greatest of all time. And you think we going to fucking listen to a dumbass motherfucker that just sit on the goddamn computer and don't know shit about boxing? You think we going to take your opinion over their fucking opinion? Hell, Oscar De La Hoya, he's been in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. He's been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao and other fucking champions. Oh, yeah, but we going to listen to your dumbass just typing away, gang banging on the fucking keyboard. The fuck out of here. That's all I got to say, y'all. I'm on to the next one.